Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> Howdy, folks. I'm Brian. I'm Amber. No, you're not. You're a ghost. Look, look, folks. Look. I'm going to move this down. Show them. Show them how ghostly you are. And uh, we'll stand up for a little bit. See, look. You can see right through her. She's clearly a ghost, and she's clearly a figment of my imagination. Yeah, it's definitely not the uh, camera thinking my SpongeBob shirt is green. Greenish, yeah. But uh, it's not the case, because that would be ridiculous. Yellow is clearly not green. You're clearly mistaken. So um, here's what Ghostly Amber... I know that there are ghostly uh, Christmas tales, and so Amber is like the ghost of Christmas present. Ghost of Christmas Amber? I don't know. And here's some Reddit. <laughs> Our first story is titled, Am I a jerk for ruining Thanksgiving? Yes, we still haven't gotten over the feast of Thanksgiving story, Reddit stories this year. They, they keep providing a cornucopia, so to speak, of uh, bad Reddit stories. So let's, let's get into it. I am a 30-year-old female, and I met my boyfriend, a 30-year-old male, three years ago. Before he was with me, he was together with his high school sweetheart. They fell out of love and broke up. A year later, we started dating. His mom, however, was still heartbroken about it. I was very understanding and thought she needed time to get to know me. The ex basically grew up with them and they saw her as part of the family. For the first year of my relationship, his mom would call me his ex's name until boyfriend got angry once and told her to be nice. She laughed it off and said it was just a habit. After that, she started calling me the wrong name, Janet instead of Jenny. Fictional names, of course. I corrected her a couple times, but she seemed to like hurting me, so I just ignored it later. My boyfriend has two sisters, and a couple weeks before Thanksgiving, we were invited to a barbecue at the older sister's house. I was in the kitchen with my boyfriend's mom, the sisters, and one of their husbands. The older sister then talked about how my boyfriend praised my cooking to her husband and the mom was listening. She then said out loud, sure, why don't we let Janet make the turkey this year? The sister started giggling and looked at each other and I said, that's a great idea. I didn't tell my boyfriend what happened. On Thanksgiving, we went to his mom's house with the usual wine and dessert. She was shocked. Everybody was shocked. I said, what? I thought Janet was bringing the turkey. There was yelling, crying, and then we got kicked out. My boyfriend is so angry with me and hasn't talked to me since. I think it's over to be honest, but I still don't think I did anything wrong, did I? <laughs> Honestly, this was probably the best move that Hopi could have made. <laughs> well, it sounds like her boyfriend hasn't done enough to stand up for her. Yeah, like, yeah. He should have put a stop to this a long, long time ago. So while it's not great that she didn't at least let him know, she probably knew he was going to squelch it and uh, not doing it. So if he's not willing to like stand up to her yeah. and for his mom, then yeah. like that's a big issue. Yeah. A long, long time ago, I still remember when Janet would make the turkey. <laughs> Sorry, folks. That's about as good as it gets. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I agree completely. I don't know. I thought I was, I was like, well, maybe we do need to say one more thing. Yeah, I agree. Completely with what Amber has to say here. I don't know that there's really much more to expand on it other than the fact that the mom and the boyfriend are both kind of acting like jerks. Right. Like, again, I don't understand how it's been three years. Like, it took, like, a long time for him, like, the first year of the relationship for him to snap at the mom for calling yeah. him the ex's name. And somehow, like, there's no there's no consequences for her to, to just keep using the wrong name on yeah. OP. And yeah. so, like, he's not like, oh, well, we're not going vi to visit if you can't respect her or something yeah. like that. So... Exactly. I think that this is probably what the mom was shooting for anyways, to break them up. And maybe she's successful. <laughs> Merry Christmas, mom, you spiteful, mean person. <laughs> Our next story is, am I the jerk for telling my sister that her wedding will never be that important to me? My sister is getting married and I'm a bridesmaid. The dresses she picked out for the bridesmaids were a shade of light orange and pink tones. I'm not a fan of pink at all, but it's a dress. I can handle it. As usual in every wedding, if you're a bridesmaid, you're expected to pay for the dress. The dress cost $150. 
This is already huge sacrifice for me, paying $150 for a dress I'll never wear again. I have some visible hand and arm tattoos. I have a back tattoo, which will be visible because the dress is backless, and my hair is brown with some pink highlights. My sister demands that I dye my hair brown and get rid of the pink highlights. She also demands that I cover my tattoos with body makeup because she wouldn't like having me with pink hair and tattoos in the wedding pictures, and the bridesmaids are supposed to look classy, and if I have pink hair and tattoos visible, people will focus more on my crazy style than on the bride and groom. I told her I'm not doing any of it. The conversation went like this. Sister slash bride. What do you mean you're not? You bought a dress you hated and you have an objection on temporarily hiding your tattoos and dyeing your hair? It's not like you can't dye your highlights back after the wedding is over. Try to understand where I'm coming from. Me. You knew I had dyed my hair and tattoos when you asked me to be a bridesmaid. This is how I love myself and it's insulting. How you expect me to change myself like this so you can have your picture-perfect wedding? I bought the dress because it's a dress. You expect me to be someone else for the day. This is how I am and I've been like this for years. Why are you suddenly surprised? Sister. I didn't think my own sister would throw a tantrum over effing tattoos and effing hair. It's my wedding, so yes, I want it to be perfect, and you either go with it or you're out of the bridal party. Me. I'm out then. Your wedding is not that important to me to lead to a point of changing myself. You either accept me like this or you don't. Don't expect me to change because you're scared of not having a classy wedding because of me. Blessings. Since then, my parents and blood... Since then, my parents and brother have called me and cursed me out for not honoring my sister's wishes. Am I the jerk? So, what do you think about this one? Not the jerk. I mean, I've said this before and I've said this, I'll say this again many, many times because this is a recurring theme on Reddit. People <laughs> are not props. Well, yeah, and I mean, I think that this is, you know, this pretty well falls in line with some of the other ones that we've talked about in the past. And it's really just unfortunate that the sister is so concerned about like the image that she's not doesn't want her sister to be part of the special occasion. She'd rather not have her sister part of the special occasion and focus on like looks than, you know, involve her sister. And I think that's probably the saddest part of this. Right. Like, do, do you want a wedding or do you want a marriage? Like, you know, some people like and this sounds like the sister just wants a like picture perfect event. Just hire people to be your bridesmaids. <laughs> like, don't try to make real people in your life into like these cookie cutter molds. Like, well, really, like you should just be like inviting people you love and not concerned about how they look. But if all you want is the aesthetic, then like just hire models to be your bridesmaids. Like. Don't make the people in your life change themselves to fit your aesthetic. But what we know, Amber's just a ghost. All right, our next letter is titled, A Small Dose of Karma for My Very Angry Neighbor. Am I the jerk for refusing to snow blow my neighbor's driveway for free? I'm a 27-year-old male, and I've lived next to this guy in his 80s, and he's honestly a nightmare. But he's old. So in like 2015 or so, I told him I would snow blow his driveway for free. Well, two years ago, I got a puppy who admittedly barked a lot. However, we did a lot of training with him and he hardly barks at all now. I know this because I work from home, so I'm always here. My dog will bark maybe once or twice per day for less than 10 seconds each time. And it's always during the daylight hours, usually around noon. I always shut it down quickly. I'm close with all of my other neighbors on the street and I've asked them if they think that my bo dog, bog, <laughs> if my bog is too loud and barks too much, if my dog barks too much. They have all said that he doesn't at all. As long as we've had my dog, my neighbor has complained about him and his complaints are rude. He has called us incompetent A's and loser. <laughs> I almost almost didn't censor myself there for a second. We almost had the beep over our dog. This summer, he told us that my relationship with him was no longer friendly and that we were strictly neighbors for the rest of the time that we lived here. He even threatened to report us to the HOA to see if they would make me get rid of my dog. I'm pretty sure they wouldn't make me get rid of him, but that did really make me angry. Anyway, last night we got our first big snowstorm of the season. Instead of snow blowing his driveway like I usually do, I snow blowed mine and went back inside. 20 minutes later, he texted me saying that 
He was going out to breakfast with his friends and needed his driveway snow blowed so he could get out. I said that I would no longer be doing his driveway for free since he said that our relationship is no longer friendly. I offered to do it for 200 bucks. Or I said that he could pay one of the kids that live in our neighborhood to do it. He got mad and told me that he didn't have the time to coordinate with the neighborhood kids and that he needed his driveway snow blowed. I told him I would do it for 200 bucks. He refused to pay me to do his driveway, so I told him I wouldn't do it. It's later in the day now, and he hasn't cleared his driveway yet. I feel great, but he called me a jerk in his texts, and my wife told me that I might be the jerk because he's old. So I figured I would pose the question here. Am I the jerk? No, and being old is not an excuse for being rude. Yeah, you know, the, to be honest, I think he should have given him a heads up ahead of time and said, look... There's a snowstorm coming this weekend. Uh, you need to make other arrangements for having your driveway snow blowed because I'm not going to do it for you anymore. I mean, possibly, but I feel like that goes above and beyond because, you know, he's just been doing this for free out of generosity. <laughs> and uh, it may not even have occurred to him, like, that the neighbor would even still want him to snow blow the driveway when they have a no longer friendly relationship. Sure, sure. I'm just saying that because I just feel like if you're if you do something, it's just generally a good idea to give a courtesy like heads up to people. I'm not even saying he's a jerk in this situation. I'm just saying that if I were in his shoes, I probably would have done it slightly different and just been like, hey, uh, just letting you know, I'm not going to be doing your uh, driveway this weekend. Good luck. Have fun with uh, shoveling or finding someone. And that way he could have at least had a heads up. So, I mean, <laughs> again, I'm not I'm not saying OP did anything wrong here. I'm just saying that I, I think that if he had wanted to give them the courtesy, he could have. Yeah, well, I, I'm i saying, like, I don't know if that even... I, I don't know if that's necessary. Like, I don't think that affects my dark rating at all. You know, you can stop doing things you do for free, free for people for out of generosity for any time you want. So, like... It's... Yeah, but I mean, with snow and, you know, blocked driveways and stuff like that, that can be, like, a hazardous situation. Like, especially if, like, since he's so old, uh, he might have, like, a medical emergency. And if the, uh, you know, if he can't get an ambulance there or something like that. Like, if this had been a neighbor who was, like, well, uh, you know, in his 30s or something like that, or, you know, younger or, you know, you know, not not in his 80s, who was, you know, capable of going out and taking care of this snow by themselves. You know, I wouldn't even bring that up. I would just say, you know, whatever, <laughs> you know, karma, for instance. Right. But uh, I because of his age and because of like the chance of some medical thing happening is, you know, higher. Uh, that's that's all. That's the only reason why I would give a courtesy heads up. I mean, that's a valid point. I mean, again, I still don't think that OP is obligated to. I don't think no, it affects my no. rating, but yeah, that is a good point. Our next story is, am I the jerk for breaking my promise to my husband and letting others meet our newborn before him? I'm a 25-year-old female, and I moved away from my town to my husband's, he's a 32-year-old male, hometown after we get married. The main reason is because he suffers from a medical chronic condition and needs to be near his family. I was pregnant with our first baby and was nearing my due date when my husband had to travel out of town for two work for two weeks. Because of this, he couldn't be with me in the delivery room, which wasn't expected. I wanted to ask my mom to come be with me, but he assured me that his family are there to help and I shouldn't be worried. He then made me promise that I don't let anyone see our son for the first time in person before him besides his stepmom who was supposed to be there for me, and I agreed. His stepmom was with me when I went into labor, but she stayed away since she is the type that doesn't get too involved and keeps her distance. She's also the I don't do diapers type, meaning she doesn't offer to help with the baby and I shouldn't be expecting it. She dropped me and my son off at home and asked that I only call if there's an emergency. I felt helpless. I asked my neighbor for a few favors but needed real help with the baby, so I called my mom. She knew I'd just given birth and asked if she could come help me and she drove four hours to come stay with me. She helped out tremendously, and I'm so grateful for that. My husband stayed away for a few more days, then came home. Once he saw my mom, he got so upset, repeatedly saying I broke the promise I made him by not letting others meet our son before him, and I explained I needed help, and he brought up his stepmom, but I replied that she dropped me off and left, and that's it. Besides, he and mom were on good terms. I don't get why he was mad she met her grandbaby, which is inevitable. 
He said it wasn't about mom since it could have been anybody else, but it was about me disrespecting his wishes and breaking the promise I made. He reminded me that he's also the parent and he gets a say too. At this point, I said he was overreacting, but he replied that I forever tainted the memory of his son's birth and broke his trust and proved to him that my word is not worth anything now. Mom tried to give us space, but I said she did nothing wrong. She came to help after her stepmom left, so I can't be blamed for asking for help. He told me to stop giving him excuses and admit I wronged him with what I did and then started avoiding me and just kept focusing his attention on her son. He keeps acting cold toward me, calling me a selfish promise breaker and expecting me to make up to him. He wanted an apology, but I haven't given it to him yet. Am I the jerk? Edited to add, we did talk to each other on the phone several times and he already knew that his stepmom refused to stay with me and told me to just call if something happens, but I didn't tell him about calling my mom, knowing how he'd react, and decided to wait till he got home so we could talk about it. Well, 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 I feel very bad for OP in this situation. Yes, OP is 100% not the jerk. Like, first of all, when you're in the, the delivery room, you should be able to say who's there with you. Like, it's yeah. really wrong that yeah. her husband was like, oh, no, you can't have your mom. You can only have my stepmom. Well, and I think that this is just absolutely absurd because, like, oh, why is he allowed to give the authority on his mom being able to see you know, the baby first, but OP's mom, no, like he gets upset yeah. about that. And I mean, I think like, it's nice to be able to see your child first, right? But I think that it's nicer to not have your partner, you know, suffering tremendously after giving birth and not right. and feeling, you know, helpless and whatnot. So, I mean, you don't want your partner to be in a bad mental state, especially after, you know, giving birth. And that's a traumatic experience. And it doesn't sound like his mom was there to help. Exactly. And it sounds like he knows how his stepmom is, that she's very hands off. And mm -hmm. he made OP promise. It sounds like she didn't volunteer this promise. He yeah. made her promise him. So she yeah. probably badgered her until she agreed to it that she wouldn't have anyone but his stepmom. It sounds like an abusive relationship, if you ask it, it me. It sounds very controlling. It, it really does. It sounds like he's try potentially even trying to isolate OP from her family. Yeah. Like they moved to be with his family. And him being like, your mom can't be in the delivery room. She can't help you. You cannot let anyone except my stepmom in. Mm -hmm. um, that, or that my mother, your stepmom. <laughs> well, no, oh, it's his stepmom. Oh, it's his stepmom. Yeah. It just seems very controlling. It seems it like does. a very controlling relationship where he is just not uh, looking out for the best interests of OP here. Yeah, he made a very unreasonable and selfish demand, and OP owes him nothing. Mm -hmm. um, honestly, like, I think this is, you know, if he keeps doing this, this is grounds for a divorce because it's not healthy relationship yeah. dynamics. It would be one thing if he felt a little disappointed when he walked through the door and saw his mother-in-law there. Mm -hmm. But the response then would be, you know, take a second and cool down and recognize that he was wrong to have this expectation yeah not double down be like you are horrible your word means nothing yeah well that's just it it's just not a not not a good promise to make someone make all right folks that's all the time we have for today i hope you enjoyed today's video thanks to amber for joining me thank you for having me even if i am just a ghost amber is just a ghost and on uh friday jr which happy friday, happy jr., friday jr by the way um her spirit will run amok and uh torment many souls i don't think i'm that kind of ghost are you like a Casper ghost? What kind of ghost are you? Are you a red rose ghost or are you a Casper ghost? Definitely more on the Casper side of things. So um, let me know in the comments below if you were a ghost, what, what ghost would you be from what movie? <laughs> hmm. Problem is I watch mostly horror movies, but like I don't think I'd really be a very scary ghost. Yeah, I'd be Slimer. No, I'm just kidding. I don't know who I would be from I, Slimer from Ghostbusters. Uh, I don't know who I would be. Who would I be? I don't know. You'd probably be a mischievous ghost. You'd I be would... like one of the prankster ghosts that like moves people's stuff. Like mm -hmm. you'd always be like just moving things slightly or you'd be the vortex. Essentially, yeah, I'd be the, yeah, the void, the vortex, the, the thing that hides your socks <laughs> in the <laughs> in the washing machine. You will you will never see your socks because of mischievous ghosts like me. That's the type of ghost you'd be. Yeah. Let me know what kind of ghost you will be. What kind of holiday. Thanks so much for watching. 
Hopefully you enjoyed today's episode. Happy Friday, Junior. And happy Friday, Junior. I was going to say that again, but then you, you cut me off. I cut Amber off. And uh, we'll see you all tomorrow. Bye.